Welcome back. Today we are going to be playing out the MiG-21 MF. I just made a video on this covering the gameplay of one of my subscribers, my Patreon subs that I kind of coach at the moment. If you are interested in that, you can check the Patreon down below. But I was going to make a video on the MiG-21 MF anyway, so I thought it couldn't be a better time than right now. I am running one R3R. And you might think, that's not that great of a missile, and you would be correct. However, in the head-ons and at higher altitudes, because basically no one runs chaff, it's actually pretty usable. Now, the lead of this thing, or the pull of it, is kind of weak, so you basically have to use it as a Minecraft arrow. But if you know how to lead it, it does correct it a little bit. And it will allow you to do certain things, especially at the start of the match. It's not a fantastic clutch missile. The main strength of it is that no one really expects it and then they try to flare it without really dodging resulting in them getting smacked directly in the nutsack just like this FRS right here. Now this guy is just not aware at all, premium player and just like that it's very good for those kind of scenarios and you will find a lot of those enemies around so in my experience carrying one of these is more than enough. Carrying two of them, I think they are too gimmicky for that. But if you like the gimmick, if you like the ability to just slam people in the head-on, they're not bad. They are definitely usable. And a lot harder, quote-unquote, to defeat than the IR missiles. Because people don't really know how to deal with them just yet. But the usability of an IR missile, just like this, is kind of undefeated at this BR. Because a lot of guys just don't really look around. There's a lot of premium players around. Just like this FRS and the first one that I shot, unfortunately he dropped a single flare. So they are a little bit circumstantial. It's up to you. Personally, I prefer IR because I can just kind of come in, sling my missiles off and be gone. I don't really have to worry about radar maintaining the lock. I have to worry about them going to the deck. And being in situations where I can shoot the missile, it's a lot easier to just run IR. Of course, radar has its users. So I think that carrying one of them is definitely helpful. F104J doesn't have flares just like that. It doesn't matter what he does, he's done. And that's the beauty of IR missiles. Of course, when people are paying attention, when they are looking at you, the missile essentially becomes useless. But considering 95% of the fighting happens on the deck regardless, and you can't use your radar missile anyway. So it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, you need to learn to aim this gun. Because the missiles... They are good, and you will get kills with them. But when you get into situations where people are actually paying attention, you will need to lead the water pistol. But thanks to Real Shadow, it's actually filled with sulfuric acid again, and it will absolutely delete people when you do connect those shells. So we are in a little bit with a 520 F5C. He's not really going for us. He's flying horizontally below us, which makes it very easy for us to just kind of loop on over. He's wasting a lot of energy here. And we are still going about 900, so that's more than sufficient, and we are directly on a 6. Now he just went head on with one of my friendlies, and I think that he got his wing shot off. I'm not entirely sure, looks like he's limping quite badly, looking at our friendly. Take a check at the kill log, and it seems like this guy is completely dead. So I'm not going to be stealing this, I don't need to, I can just kind of push this guy into the ground. And that's exactly what we are going to do, we are going to go sit directly above him. He's probably going to try to dodge downwards. At least that was my intention. And at, at the end of the day, he turns out to uh, kill himself all on his own. Works with me. Takes me less time and effort. So I can transition over to being gay again. We go for the Kefir. Kind of crit him. Not sure how badly damaged he is. But I don't really want him to go back to the airfield. So we are going to chase him back. He's not doing too hot. So we are going to shoot again. Hit him again. And... Yeah, there was before a real set of fix, and you can tell just how bad these guns really are. They did absolutely nothing. This is the only clip from before real shadow. Don't you worry about it. I'm gonna try to make fear reenact 911 here, but before that, he is gonna let his beast deep inside of him fight back. I just pull up, and I mean, he's crit, he's on fire, he's gonna do absolutely nothing other than commit a Saddam Hussein. So. There is the other Kefir, and we don't have much fuel left, and I need to use my afterburner here to get all of my speed back. Because the Kefir is definitely one of those planes that I don't want to fight. It's a C7. It's not a Canard. It's not a Mirage. It's a Kefir C7. And that thing is basically us, but better in... Yeah, basically every regard. 
and I just reenacted the plane again. I can already feel the clip. Fantastic. But the Kefir C7 is tied up with another of my teammate, and there's another teammate coming in. And because we have more commitment than the average dad trying to go get milk after the baby has been born, we are gonna go and go fight the demon that is the Kefir C7. So we go head on, and I shoot at the average range at about 1.9. Except he's going much slower than I thought he was, so that gun was essentially out of range. We are then gonna go straight into the vertical, and this is a fight that I'm not really keen on winning on my own. But we are on very low fuel, he just took off and he's taking the absolute worst line possible, so we are just gonna pull directly into his loop. And then he gets blown apart by my teammate, and that's gonna be kill number... Yeah, you thought, I'm not doing that. He is dead, and we are gonna go straight back to the next match. Here we are on Sands of Sinai. Pretty high altitude because we got fully down tiered. And then this thing becomes a bit of a menace. Really only countered by vehicles like the Gepard. Or maybe uh, a Roland. Or maybe even an M247. Those are the kind of planes you really have to look out for. And there's of course a lot of enemy aircraft as well. But if you play it right, the only thing you really have to worry about in a sense of... Oh shit, I might be dead in a 1v1... Are planes like the MiG-19, planes like the MiG-21 SMT, but those are in your in your game. Those are in your team. You don't really have to worry about them. Of course, when you get up to it, you get the Kefirs and all the other the the meta stuff, the MiG-23s, MLDs, and I know I don't know what else. Those planes are pretty rough, but at 10.3, especially in the down tier, you're really not gonna have to worry about too much, and you are gonna be walking everyone's shit. Now this is in small games. The issue where the MiG-21 MF really starts showing its weaknesses is in the team fights. Because you don't have the same power of the MiG-21 SMT. Sure the SMT is slightly heavier, but the engine power is just so dominant that the acceleration almost makes up for the speed loss. This thing you will sit at lower speeds a little bit longer, making you a lot more vulnerable. And even in a 1v1 the SMT even though it's less maneuverable, it will give you a hell of a time just because it has so much power and just because it's going to take you so long to actually build up your energy again. They can just extend away, energy trap you, and then you are dead. Sure, when the MiG-21 SMT just plays energy, plays it very slow, you're going to have a rough time. In an actual straight-up balls-to-the-wall dogfight, you might actually end up winning because you just have a little bit more nose authority, but in general... It's kind of rough. But again, the real plane that counters you... Well, it's most likely going to be Gepard. Just like that, speak of the devil. We then turn this thing into a helicopter. So we are going to try to use our ailerons to push the nose down. This will make us pick up a little bit of speed. And then you will start spinning very slowly. And you can turn it into a helicopter, fly back to base, and you can land and repair. But that's going to take a while, so let's go to the next game. And this right here is why I carry the R3Rs. MiG-19 at... Low altitude, orbit, dodge this, kill number one, thank you very much for playing. And the MiG-19 is one of those planes that you just don't want to deal with in this thing. The MiG-19 will absolutely run circles around you, although there may be the first and second turn, but you will just lose so much speed that you can't really do much. It's extremely annoying to fight, it's extremely painful to deal with, and it makes for an absolute horrendous match if they decide to chase you and they are committed to you for the entirety of the match you really have little chances other than just running trying to reverse him in one or two turns and then you just have to leave again you cannot try to dogfight them prolonged because if you do just that you are gonna be absolutely picked apart i'm pre-flaring here because of the a6e i don't want that a9l to even come off the rail and have a rng chance of hitting us so once I have enough separation, I'm going to be turning in here to deny the angle of the FAU. But I don't want to turn in too hard because then the A6E starts riding my ass. So I'm going to do a little bit of a gradual turn. I'm going to get the FAU directly on my 6 now, but not close enough because we denied his angle. And those missiles are very easily flareable because he only has A9Ds. So he gets on our 6, flare a little bit, and we are extending now because we are just much much faster and if you had watched my video on the f8e that i made a little bit ago you saw just how annoying it is to deal with a mig-21 if we get into a dogfight 
he will win if he plays it right. Now, there's a very big chance that he won't because it is an F8U2. And most of the people that are actually F8 enjoyers will be flying the F8E. But I'm still not risking it. Having that guy on R6 before we even start is going to give him too much of an advantage. That is very hard to mess up. So I'm just going to carry on. We are this time actually going to get some milk. And we will return into his life once he is 25 years old and turns out to become a millionaire. And suddenly I want to acknowledge you as my child and I want to have half of your money because I'm of course your dad. But that's for later on in the match. F105 comes back and the F105 is actually really annoying to deal with in this thing because it's fast. It has a shitload of ammo and they are most more often than not absolutely suicidal. So I'm gonna try to turn around right now, see if I can kill him. I know the Azure 25 is coming back but by the time I will be in this head on... And he needs to do a 180. I should be quick enough to run away from him. Or if he tries to be a little bit too aggressive. He's going to blow his wings off. But the entirety of the enemy team is now directly above us. So we are just going to dive to the deck. We're going to try to get above Mach 1. Because none of these planes are fast enough to catch us. Other than the F-105. Now the issue is I don't want to fly into this direction. There's clouds. There's no teammates. And there's an absolute metric load of enemies. We have an F-105 coming in who will catch us. We have the F-8U who will outturn us. We have an AV-8 and an A-6E that will boat sling missiles at us. So this is a bit of a predicament. But then it looks like some of them are breaking off. And this is why I use my speed. It's not so much to just run away forever. But I want to run away for long enough that one or two of those guys just get so bored that I only have to do a 1v1 or maybe a 2v1. And if they don't want to break off, I will just run for long enough to the point where we have enough separation. So either way, the result is essentially the same. The only difference is that if they actually do break off, I'm going to have more time to kill the other guys because then I don't have to run away for as long. So I'm gonna go a little bit into the, into the vertical because the higher we go the higher my speed advantage becomes against the F-105 because the F-105 is not airframe limited he is engine limited I am airframe limited and not engine limited which means that at higher altitudes where the IAS is lower we can actually go faster than him because well we have more power and we don't risk breaking our wings off. And in a dogfight, this guy has absolutely no chance. So I'm going to bring him up into a little bit of a higher altitude. Making him a little bit less maneuverable. Making his speed advantage a little bit lower. And just like that, one or two turns. And we are instantly on six. Now he can run away here. So that's why I'm priming the missile. I need to get this guy out of the match. Because if he keeps doing this, I am going to lose. Even though the F-105 is not that great of a plane. But if you have an F-105 in the enemy team together with his teammates it actually becomes pretty annoying to deal with because he can just continuously boom and zoom onto you and he will make my speed advantage basically nothing he's going to nullify our speed advantage making their maneuverability advantage actually useful because the F105 will push me slow enough to the point where I will be caught and I will be dead very quickly the A10 then gets absolutely dicked out of the air by an M247 absolutely fantastic game design unfortunately for him he does not know the helicopter technique and he ends up dying but what do we do now we are just gonna look for enemies as the rest of the enemy team is going rtb i want to pick apart the other half of the team that is not rtb right now they are separated and these are prime times to engage it's also because i want to kill as many people as possible i like to fight multiple people at once and right now my team isn't there. So I'm going to take the risk. Well, it's not really risky, is it? When it's an SU-25, an A-10 and an AV-8. But I'm going to take the risk of fighting multiple people at once. Because that's the thing I truly enjoy in this game. I get on this guy 6. He's not really... I'm, I don't know what he's doing. I don't really mind either. Thank you for the free missile. And we are going to turn back in and see if we can fight the rest. We have one missile left. We have half our cannon rounds left. But the AV-8 and the A-10 or the SU-25, I don't know, the ground pounders here are killing our tickets. And I need to make sure that they don't have too much of a ticket advantage before I go back to base. Because then by the time I'm back in the air, we have already lost the game. So I might as well risk it right now. Maybe I run out of fuel. Maybe I run out of ammo. It doesn't really matter. I need to stop this ticket bleed before it is too late. 
Because then one guy sitting next to the airfield, one guy hiding somewhere on the map, will win the game for them. This A-10 has the absolute brilliant idea to stall himself out directly in front of us. The SU-25 and the MiG-17 are RTB. The MiG-17 just got missiled out of the air by my teammate that's directly next to us. And the F-8U just took back off. And as we said earlier, we just wait until they turn 25 and then we will start stealing all the money. So there's an F-8U here. He just took off. We are on very low fuel again, so we are a tremendous bit lighter. So this time around, I don't feel as pressed in dogfighting this guy. I can smell the millions right now. And he's just kind of floating in front of us. He doesn't have the life experience yet. He's just 25. And it's very easy for us to just take him apart. Thank you for half your fortune. And we will now strafe the last guy in the enemy team. There's an AV-8 on the runway as well as an SU-25. We are just going to fly directly over the runway. Bait half the missiles. They don't really do much right now anyway. And we come in third row in case they don't actually kill anyone. The A5C turns itself into an ICBM. Unfortunately, he doesn't end up killing the AV-8. So we aim at the cockpit and take him out of his misery. And that's going to be kill number six. Thank you all for watching. And you will see me all in the next one.